So 4.4 is the product rule, and that's on pages 188 to 192 in your text. Our curriculum outcome is to demonstrate understanding of differentiation based on slope as a rate of change. And our lesson objective is number one, to learn how to derive the product rule for differentiation, and number two, to learn how to use the product rule. So sometimes we need to be able to find the derivative of two or more functions multiplied together without having to actually multiply them together. So for example, this 3x squared plus 4x minus 5 being multiplied by negative 4x to the fourth plus 9x squared minus 4x minus 7. We don't want to have to multiply 3x squared by everything in the second set of brackets and then 4x multiplied by everything and then negative 5 multiplied by everything and then taking the, the derivative of what we have left. So there's something called the product rule that will help us get there. And we're going to be developing that on the next slide. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be starting with this function here, f of x being um, two functions multiplied together, little f of x times g of x. And we're going to use the definition of the derivative, so limits, to help us find f prime x. So here's our function f of x equals f of x times g of x. And we're going to use the limit definition of the derivative to help us find out what that limit actually is, or find out what the derivative is of this thing. So we get f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. Now, instead of uh, an x in this original function, we have to put in an x plus h. So we end up getting f of x plus h times g of x plus h, because we actually had two different functions here, minus um, f of x times g of x. And that's all over h. So now I'm going to do something um, that you may think is kind of out of the blue, but it has a purpose. I am going to add and subtract by the same term. And that term is, well, let me just change colors here. That term is, I'm going to subtract f of x plus h times g of x. And I'm going to add f of x plus h times g of x. And because I'm subtracting and adding the same thing, it's like I'm adding one or adding nothing, sorry, to this, to this whole e equation. But the reason I'm going to do that is that now I'm going to take out a greatest common factor out of the first two terms. I'm going to take a greatest common factor out of the second two terms. So I'm going to use grouping. We've done that before in factoring. So in the first two terms here, I have a f of x plus h. And that means what I have left over is g of x plus h minus g of x. And in the second two terms here, I can take out a g of x as my greatest common factor. And if I do that, left inside the brackets is going to be f of x plus h minus f of x, all divided by, this whole thing is divided by h. Now, maybe you can see where I'm going with this. g of x plus h minus g of x, all divided by h, happens to be g prime x. That's the derivative of g. And so I can replace this by saying the limit, oops, there we go. The limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h times this whole thing is g prime x. It's the derivative. And over here, I can have g of x and f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. That is f prime x. So what we have now is this h is now gone because basically what I've done is um, divided this thing by h and divided this thing by h. And then this is what I found was the derivative of g prime x. And this is the derivative uh, f prime x. So I don't have an h in the denominator anymore. So I can now substitute in my h equals 0. And what I get is f of x times g prime x plus g of x multiplied by f prime x. And this is what our derivative is. This is the product rule. So when you have two functions multiplied together, f of x and g of x, you can take the derivative of one of them and multiply it by the original, and you add the derivative of the other one and multiply it by the original. So we'll usually write it like this, f of prime x times g of x plus uh, f of x times g prime x. So our example says we're going to use the product rule to find the derivative of the following function. h of x equals x cubed minus 1 times 2x plus 5. Well, if we follow what the derivative says, so h prime x, we're going to take the derivative of the first thing. So I always suggest for you to um, write what you're going to take the derivative of and put the little prime there. And we're going to multiply that by 2x plus 5. And then we're going to add to that 
x cubed minus 1 multiplied by the derivative of 2x plus 5. So that's the pattern for the, uh, the product rule. So when we now come to taking the actual derivative, the derivative of x cubed minus 1, we learned the other day, is just 3x squared minus 0. So we can just leave it like that. And then we have that multiplied by 2x plus 5. And over here, we have x cubed minus 1 multiplied by the derivative of 2x plus 5, which is just 2. So in most cases, you're going to want to expand this thing and then just simplify it. So we're still looking, we still are looking for the derivative, sorry. 3x squared times 2x is 6x cubed plus 15x squared plus 2x cubed minus 2. We can combine like terms. So we get 4x, sorry, we get 8x cubed plus 15x squared minus 2 as that is being our derivative. So this is just a shorter way um, of finding the derivative than actually expanding this, this thing due to FOIL and then taking each term and um, finding the derivative of it. So in summary, the product rule allows us to find the derivative of a function that is the product of two other functions without having to actually multiply them together first. So if our original function was f of x times g of x, then our derivative is f prime x times g of x plus f of x times g prime x. So we just take the derivative of one thing, multiply it by the other, and then we switch it up. We take the derivative of the other thing, multiply it by the first thing. So if we were to have three different functions, f of x times g of x times h of x, then we would take the derivative of one, multiply it by the other two, take the derivative of the second one, multiply it by the other two, and then take the derivative of the third one and multiply it by the other two. And in order to organize what you're taking the derivative of and what you are leaving, it may be advantageous for you, that's not your, for you, to use brackets with the little prime sign, just because if you get to a situation like this, you'll want to know which you're actually taking the derivative of and which you're going to leave. So your assignment is on pages 191 to 192. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.